subscriber tried to start a fight with Carolyn and Carolyn's pretty serious about this so I'll explain that in a little bit but tell you what's going on for today Carolyn's doing laundry she got most of it done so now she's working on sheets and blankets she actually got it done pretty quickly today she's got all the laundry up here and then the under clothes are up here on the porch she's she started hanging clothes up there on the porch I guess to keep the random I don't not sure why she keep putting them up there but she wanted another line so we put it up well she actually put that up there and so she's doing laundry thing is is this morning I filled the IBC tank now as you know I've been working very diligently to get the well pump to run off solar panels and man it's been a great success we have not used the generator since we figured this out kind of a long story but if you go back to my videos you'll see that we moved solar panels up 10 feet we was able to get two extra hours of sunlight by doing that I added two more solar panels which I'm not even sure was really necessary but did it anyways and a new charge controller and that has made all the difference in the what world the, the second charge controller because in the past one charge controller was sensing that it was charging batteries instead of sensing that it was on the load so when it was on a load it would go up to about 40 amps give all the amps the solar panels could almost give it long story but the charge controller was a little underpowered it should have been 60 amps but it wasn't regardless it was only giving 40 amps but as soon as you shut the well pump off the amps would drop down to 25 even though there was 50 amps available from the solar panels so by adding a second charge controller I tricked the system into thinking I need to put 25 amps in this charge controller and 25 amps in that charge controller so now I'm getting a total of 50 amps from two charge controllers because I put six panels on one charge controller six panels on the other charge controller the reason is, is at least my theory, is the charge controller believes it's charging a 100 amp battery. I have 800 amps of battery, so I can put more amps into it. 100 amp battery, you can only put 25 amps into. You're supposed to put 25% of the battery's total amperage into it per hour. So 100 amp hour battery, 25 amps an hour. But I have 800 amps. So I can put a lot more amps into the battery without damaging them. But the charge controller doesn't know that. So putting it on a second charge controller, huge difference. So 9.30 the sun comes up. By 10 o'clock the batteries are basically charged. So I came up here, I filled the IBC tank. And I went on about my business, shut it off. Came back up and Carolyn said, I missed you. I was hoping that you could fill the sinks. Sure, no problem. So I went back down there, started it up, filled the two sinks. I don't know, within an hour, the battery's completely charged again. I may be the only person who is overly excited about this. I mean, it's just, it's so thrilling to me to think that I don't have to have a generator to get water out of the ground anymore. I'm not a big conspiracy theorist. I mean, that's probably the wrong phrase to use. I used to be a conspiracy theorist and I always, knew that the end of the world was coming why well, i've gotten away from that the older i got the more i realized just one bad event after another but they, we always seem to self-correct and so instead of being so scared about everything i've kind of just grown older and realized if it comes it comes and i'll deal with it when it comes so we live off grid and everybody seems to think that makes me a, a prepper well i'm not a prepper i'm just a guy that lives off grid who happens to be prepared for a lot of things if something were to happen. Preppers would call it SHTF, stuff hits the fan. I will admit, the one thing that always concerned me is if there was a power outage for an extended period of time, what would we do with, for water? We have 275 gallons in the IBC tank, but eventually that would run out. So I always thought, well, I could get the water out of the spring down the hill. I've showed you that natural spring several times. And if all, possible I could run the well pump off the solar panels before I did all these modifications on bright sunny days that was the only time I could actually do it so the long-term plan had been we would can all our freezer food so we wouldn't have to run the freezer anymore that would give me plenty of energy in the batteries to fill the IBC tank regularly off the well but of course we got a can that's the challenge and so there was just always that stress 
that if something were ever to happen, even though I'm not a prepper, I would like to have a better supply of water. Well, now I've got it. I'm literally living like I would if there was no electric in the world, where I couldn't go to the gas station and get gas. The only downside to this would be on cloudy days. We wouldn't be able to run the freezer through the night. We saw that the other day. It was really cloudy and we just wasn't able to do it. So I'm going to get some more batteries. Matter of fact, the next time we go into town, I'm gonna to get another battery. And I'm just gonna see basically what we can do. And the other thing is, is I'm just going to have to come to the understanding that eventually I'm gonna to have to run the batteries below 50%. It may damage the batteries, but I know how to fix them. I can fix them. The other thing is, is the freezer doesn't necessarily have to run overnight. We could shut it off and everything would stay frozen long enough that I got up the next day, the sun was out, I could start the freezer back up and the panels would cha charge the battery and run the freezer. You would just have to make some adjustments to your life. But it sure is exciting to know that we got endless amount of water for free. The, the water is free, the electric is free. I don't know, there's just something really exciting about this for me. Of course, these solar panels, I said in the past, is my hobby, I enjoy doing it. So I guess maybe that has something to do with it too, but like hunting, I enjoy hunting, and when you get a deer, you're pretty excited about getting a deer. So maybe it's the same thing. So now, I've told you that Carolyn got this shed put together. I got the floor built and we put it up the other day. It's all screwed down. And so now I'm going to start transferring the batteries from the truck camper here into the shed. We're going to put a white tarp over it so it doesn't get so hot in there. But I also ordered a few things that I'm waiting on. So the one thing I was waiting on was an extension cord. It's a 10 gauge extension cord indoor outdoor. Because I'm going to have to extend the wire coming from the house and from the well to make it over to the shed now i know somebody's going to say i should just rewire it i'd rather not split up that wire it just seems to me that you're not supposed to so i got this heavy duty industrial strength 10 gauge extension cord and i'm just going to run it from this point here on over to the shed now the wire from the house is a little bit buried so i'm going to have to unbury it and bring it over to here now the well wire i have off the ground I may just do that to both of them. I just may figure out how to get them both off the ground, but we'll see. That was temporary anyways. And then on Monday, this is Wednesday, I should be receiving 30 of these clips here. This is uh, what I'll do is I want to connect my batteries. I got eight batteries, so you go positive, 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 positive to all eight and the negative, 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 all eight. So I made some wiring out of 12 gauge wire. I showed that to you the other day because I got so much 12 gauge laying around here. I, just people giving it away nearly a while back. So I made a bunch of wires. Well, I wanna get that onto my new wire. That way I can just bolt it down onto the battery because the battery has a nut and a bolt sticking out of it. Now, one of the batteries, it's brand, this is the newest battery, as a matter of fact, has a stripped threads on that battery post, and so the nut that came with it won't go down on it. So I'm going to get an alligator clamp. I got a bunch of them just from old battery chargers and stuff, and I'll put an alligator clamp on th this tip for that one battery. A little discouraging, but I don't want to have to go replace that battery. So then on uh, Tuesday, I guess I'll start moving all the batteries. Now I will have to run a generator to make that happen because the solar panels are gonna be completely disconnected. So I'll get that new propane generator down here and I'll hook the house, Carolyn's son's camper up to it. And that big generator, I'll run it off gasoline because it runs slower and produces more power on gasoline than it does propane. So since I'm gonna have to run it for so long, I don't want to run on propane because that's just a lot of high RPMs. Propane runs faster on that than gasoline. And then that'll give me plenty of time to get everything switched over. If I don't get the batteries charged that day because 
there wasn't enough time for the sun to charge them up. I can charge the batteries with the generator. It'll be running, so go ahead and charge it up once I get them all hooked up. Run the well, get it filled up all off the generator, and then by Wednesday, the whole house electric will be over to the shed. It's gonna be a little bit of a project, but we're getting it done. So, sometimes people say some very rude things to me. In the comment section, I get emails, and it is aggravating. I don't think that I've done anything that is so terrible in life that it deserves the kind of disgusting comments that I get. But as a YouTuber, they say that you just have to get used to it. Now, that is from people who are trolls. There are troll channels out there that says, well, if you're gonna make YouTube videos, you should just expect it. So they know they're mean, they know it. And they want you to just deal with it. Carolyn is not in videos. So she does not deserve anything. This is why she isn't in videos. One of the reasons she's not in videos is she just doesn't wanna deal with the jerks. Well, we had some really stupid person email me my email address and it says do not read for carolyn's eyes only now i'm paraphrasing it said something like that so i'm like what why are you sending me an email for carolyn so i hand the phone to carolyn she reads it and this woman is basically calling me lazy that if Carolyn wants anything done you're just gonna have to do it yourself like you did with the shed because he ain't gonna get it done that camper needed to come down a long time ago and the only way you're gonna get that done is do it yourself well th this just infuriated Carolyn first of all we built the camper together while we were on the roads at dad's house and whether you like the looks of it or not doesn't really matter it did a fine job. And if it wasn't caving in on the front end cab over, the floor of the cab over is starting to fall down. And the reason is, is we overloaded it. We got all those batteries up there and it just started to sink. And as a result, it started to fall down. So we decided that it's time to come down. But if it hadn't done that, if I hadn't overloaded it, we probably would never get rid of it. Carolyn said that just, just, well, no, today. There's nothing wrong with it. Keep it. Why waste it? But this woman thinks it's intolerable that it's here and that Carolyn needs to take action. Well, it just infuriated Carolyn. Who is she to basically call me lazy? I've busted my, and this is what Carolyn said, not what I said. I busted my butt to get that tiny house built. We got the property cleaned. We work as a team. Carolyn and I have a great relationship. And you're not going to get some woman who is angry with men to convince Carolyn to hate me. You, you just It's not going to happen. And it was pretty brave of her to say it. So Carolyn wanted to reply. And I said, no, it's my email. Let me apply. So I replied. And I gave her a a, a good understanding of my position about her coming and I mean, I've told you in the past I'm not a big fan of people I'm not a people person and I'm especially not a big fan of rude people that is clearly rude calling someone lazy so I gave her a piece of my mind well of course she is shocked that's what she replied she is shocked that I would say such things that is terrible I slighted your manhood a little bit and you're going to come back with that kind of language. Why are you shocked? You knew you were trying to insult me and I'm just supposed to sit there and take it? No! I, that's why I don't like people is they have this expectation they can be as mean as they want to be and I got to just sit there and take a beating. No! I am not going to lay down to anybody. Carolyn isn't just going to lay down to anybody. That behavior is not acceptable in our society. I know it has become mainstream, but it's not acceptable. And they're not gonna tolerate it. So she said, well, you lost a subscriber. Good, I don't want your kind around. <laughs> Pathetic. So Carolyn's pretty angry with that lady. I would suggest that lady stay away. 
So if you click this up next box, take your video where I was talking about somebody wanting to turn me in for being mentally ill. So I hope I can inspire you to stand your ground so you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.